On March 1, 2023, more than 30 employees held up white paper and banners in front of the Zhenjiang City Tax Bureau in Jiangsu Province, demanding their unpaid salaries. Two banners read, Zhenjiang City Taxation Bureau owes employees wages, and Zhenjiang City Taxation Bureau and Director Ye Hua failed to fulfill their duties. These people did not shout slogans, but just stood silently to protest. The fact that the tax bureau owes its employees wages has also surprised many people. What a strange thing, the tax collector has no money to pay wages, it seems that the local financial problem is very dire. It is really a big shock to people, how is the richest government department short of money? But what makes people happy is that the white paper movement is actually being carried forward due to the taxation authorities. On February 28th, in front of the Harbin branch of China Post, many employees held banners calling for wages and kept shouting slogans such as Malicious pay cuts, heaven forbid, China Post not paying wages. China Post Group Corporation is a large, state-owned enterprise operating the official postal service of China. The group's Harbin branch was established in 1999. In recent years, the economic growth that Chinese authorities pride themselves on has stagnated and is even going downhill. In particular, during the three years of the pandemic, the Chinese communist authorities regulated the whole industry with a harsh zero-COVID policy, which led to an economic standstill, loss of foreign trade orders to Vietnam and Southeast Asia countries, the closure of small and medium-sized businesses, and an increase in the number of unemployed. The local government's way of making money by selling land did not work due to the collapse of the real estate industry, causing an immediate financial crisis. At the same time, local governments have been unable to make ends meet due to spending large amounts of money over long periods of time for PCR testing in the implementation of the central government's zero-COVID policy. Recently, local buses have been suspended due to lack of money, and employees of public institutions such as China Post have pulled up banners to ask for wages. However, the most outrageous thing is that the Guangxi Public Security Bureau actually defaulted on its electricity bills, owing 480,000 yuan in unpaid bills causing its power to be cut. As soon as the news came out, it sparked intense public debate. On February 27th, a social media notice revealed that Guangxi Public Security Bureau owed 484,000 yuan for unpaid January 2023 electricity bills and historical penalties. The principal amount owed was 478,000 yuan with an additional penalty of 6,000 yuan. Due to non-payment despite repeated reminders, their electricity were cut off according to the Electricity Supply and Use Regulations, Article 27 and 39, and their contract agreement, starting February 27. In this regard, the staff of the Guangxi Public Security Bureau told Top News on February 27 that there is still electricity. I can only tell you that we can go to work as per normal. Subsequently, the reporter called the customer service of Guangxi Division of Southern Power Grid, who confirmed there are indeed more than 480,000 yuan of electricity bills unpaid. We will act in accordance with the relevant laws and contract provisions. We will determine when the power will be cut off. The customer service representative also confirmed that although a payment was made on February 20th, there is still a significant amount owing. Recently, there has been a constant stream of news that local finances are in crisis, but the fact that a provincial administrative department is in arrears on its electricity bills has people shocked. Some people said mockingly, this is a sign that local finances are steadily improving, the people harvesting money are owing money, are there not enough funds for stability maintenance? Others said, this is the difference between public and private. If ordinary people or ordinary companies Oh, even just a hundred dollars, their power would have been cut. There are also netizens questioning the electricity company's double standards. How could government departments owe money? But we are all precharged. If the balance is not enough, they automatically cut off the power. In fact, it is not new for state enterprises and government agencies to suffer financial constraints. As early as 2020, there were constant rumours that civil servants' bonuses are suspended. In 2023, the situation intensified. 
In February, China's financial media, China Business Network, reported that all 31 Chinese provinces' cities emphasized the need to live on a tighter budget this year. The report cited the latest fiscal revenue and expenditure figures for 2022 released by China's Ministry of Finance, which showed that broad fiscal revenue last year was about 28.16 trillion RMB, down 6.3% from the previous year, while broad fiscal expenditure was 37.12 trillion RMB, up 3.1%. The difference between revenue and expenditure amounted to 8.96 trillion RMB. Amid China's deteriorating economy, the communist government's fiscal revenue is decreasing year by year, whilst the fiscal gap is increasing. According to the China Fiscal Policy Report 2021, published by the official Chinese think tank, the China Academy of Public Finance and Public Policy, China's government revenue growth rate is expected to continue to slow down during the period from 2021 to 2025. However, government expenditure is projected to keep increasing with an average growth rate of over 7.5%. According to the report, with no reforms, the fiscal gap is projected to narrow to about 4.7 trillion RMB in 2021. In the following years, the fiscal gap will continue to expand and is expected to reach 10.7 trillion RMB by 2025. At the same time, many regional government departments began to cut staff and reduce spending. Chinese media The Paper reported in January this year, Wuzui district of Yichun City in the province of Heilongjiang abolished four sub-district governments in December 2022 and turned them into the less burdensome township government structure. In nearby Nianzishan district of Qitiha City, the Fuqiang sub-district government was replaced with the Huan Town Hip government. In January this year, Yichun City turned both Shuanghezi and Tierlin sub-districts into towns. According to China's Deep Blue Financial, the main reason for simplifying government structures is that regional governments are in a financially dire situation. During the first three quarters of 2022, Heilongjiang's GDP was 1.044 trillion yuan, ranking bottom seventh in the country's provincial administrative regions. In addition to the simplifying government structures, as early as 2019, Yichun City underwent a large-scale zoning adjustment, abolishing 15 municipal districts and streamlining institutions, including reducing the number of local courts from 15 down to 8. During China's economic downturn, the implementation of the abolishing streets and establishing towns policy in several cities of Heilongjiang province may result in the iron rice balls of some urban civil servants being shattered, exposing them to the risk of unemployment. In October 2022, the Chinese media Tai Jing reported that Hechu County in Shanxi province reduced 36 institutions to 22 with the number of leadership positions reduced from 135 to 114. They also integrated 186 relevant government units into 40 and reduced the total number of positions from 1,964 to 659, a decrease of more than 50%. The news of civil service layoffs went viral. The reason behind the downsizing is also because the local government has no money. Relevant data show that in 2021, the local public budget revenue was 1.2 billion, but the expenditure was more than 2 billion, and the debt ratio was as high as 85.65%. Under the economic downturn, it is extremely difficult for small counties in underdeveloped provinces to generate revenue. They can only try to reduce debt through cost-cutting measures and downsizing has become a necessary option. Although this cannot be considered a complete layoff, it has indeed shaken the long-standing iron rice bowl status of civil servants. However, this is not just a special case in small counties, but rather widespread. Since April 2020, nine provinces in China have been selected as pilot regions for the reform of public institutions, and since the start of the reform pilot in Heilongjiang province, more than 83,000 positions have been revoked in just over a year. Local governments have no money, and the central government of the Communist Party of China is equally short of money. The Chinese authorities abandoned their three-year-old zero-COVID policy in December last year in a jaw-dropping change of attitude. 
The Wall Street Journal reports that while many reports have emphasized a white paper campaign as to why the administration is retreating from its zeroing strategy, there may be a simpler reason. The government is running out of money. The report said the basis of the zero COVID policy is PCR testing, but the cost required is staggering. According to a report by the Bank of China, if PCR testing covered 900 million Chinese people, the cost would be as much as 100 billion US dollars per year. The research arm of Chinese brokerage firm Dongwu Securities calculated a much higher figure. According to the brokerage's report, if all of China's first and second tier cities with a total population of 505 million implemented PCR testing, the cost would be more than 240 billion US dollars per year. In 2021, China's government fiscal revenue was nearly 2.9 trillion US dollars. It was calculated that conducting testing in the largest cities in China would cost 8% of China's annual fiscal revenue. Research by Su Chao Securities shows that if some cities in China implement partial lockdown measures for two weeks, the total monthly cost will reach 22.4 billion US dollars. If there is a nationwide lockdown throughout the year, the total cost will reach 268 billion US dollars, which accounts for more than 9% of China's annual fiscal revenue. Starting from the end of May 2022, the central government will no longer assist with costs for PCR testing, thus straining local government budgets, which were already running huge deficits due to the collapse of China's real estate industry. The largest source of taxes for local governments in the Communist Party of China is revenue from land sales, with official data showing that commissions paid by real estate developers to local governments for land acquisitions accounted for more than 40% of local revenues in the past 10 years and 41% in 2021. In May 2022, the then Premier of State Council, Li Keqiang, spoke to 100,000 Communist Party cadres from various regions in a conference call and stated that local governments must rely on themselves. He said, I am here to let you know the bottom line. There is a natural disaster reserve fund managed by the Premier, but in addition to this, municipal authorities must find ways to raise funds on their own. Another problem brought about by the local lack of money is the problem of medical insurance. Funding for health insurance comes from the local government finances. When funding is in trouble, cities such as Wuhan are pushing for health insurance reform in which the local government has reduced rebates for individuals, prompting seniors to protest in the streets.